Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all to the 14th lecture of uh, the course, course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So uh, this is uh, overall the 14th lecture, uh, but it is uh, second lecture of module 5. So before uh, we talk about today's lecture, uh, let us have a brief recap of the last lecture that is uh, lecture 13. So in the last lecture, we have we discussed about uh, relaxation exercises as a as a uh, strategy for uh, coping with the stress and we discussed that you know the relaxation exercises are kind of becoming very increasingly popular uh, in <coughs> as a way of or as a coping strategy for dealing with stress and anxiety and there are many uh, such relaxation exercises available however we have discussed uh, specifically two such strategies uh, one is deep breathing and another is called as uh, progressive muscle relaxation so in the deep breathing uh, we have discussed you know uh, uh, the deep breathing is also called as you know uh, abdominal breathing or diaphragmatic breathing uh, generally our breathing pattern we have discussed is kind of associated with our mental states so whenever we get stressed and anxious uh, generally our breathing patterns become shallow and uh, fast but when we experience relaxed state of mind our breathing generally becomes uh, deep and slow so with this idea uh, that uh, when we experience uh, stress and anxiety our uh, you know, it induces a kind of chest breathing or shallow breathing or fast breathing so if you can exercise or kind of introduce deep breathing at that time where when we are experiencing stress and anxiety it will change our mental experiences or mental states from anxious to more relaxed state and we try to see the mechanisms and how it works in the last lecture and we also we have also given no, uh, gave uh, <coughs> the instructions about how to do such you know, exercises one simple exercises we have kind of demonstrated how we can do such a deep breathing exercises uh, the second concept that we have discussed in the last lecture is uh, uh, is called as you know progressive muscle relaxation uh, as the name suggests you know uh, it kind of induces a relaxation in the body uh, progressively you know from you know progressively uh, one muscle group after another muscle groups throughout the body uh, and the basic idea in progressive muscle relaxation is that you know uh, we try to induce first tense a muscle group and then relax it so this contra creation of a contrast actually help us to induce much more deeper relaxation state in our body and uh, you know it not only just relaxes your um, uh, mind but it also relaxes your muscles of the body and uh, stress in our mind is associated with the stress in the uh, muscles of the body uh, specifically it expresses in terms of aches and pains in our body and uh, we uh, also you know uh, discussed the detailed process of progressive muscle relaxation in the last class so these are a few important concepts that we have discussed uh, in the last lecture so today we will talk about the mental ways of coping so we are discussing uh, various constructive coping strategies and the last two lectures uh, we have been talking about you know mostly the physical ways of coping where we have discussed you know physical exercise as a coping strategy 
then relaxation exercises as a coping strategy uh, today we'll talk uh, you know about how at the mental level we can uh, address uh, the stress and deal with the stress so mental ways of coping what are the approaches and what are the uh, things that we need to look at uh, because uh, most of the time as we have already discussed uh, in, in our initial lectures the stress is largely subjective and you know it largely depends on our interpretation of the situation so thought processes plays very important role in the you know creation of an experiences of the stress therefore you know finding the causes at the mental level or the, at, the, at the thought levels is very important so today we we'll look at uh, how we we'll try to understand how mind creates stress and at the mental level what can we do in terms of coping with uh, stress or anxiety or you no know, emotional or psychological issues in general so it is much more broader than just dealing with stress it is more about you no know, dealing with emotional and psychological issues so in that context uh, we will discuss uh, abc theory of albert ellis uh, we will also uh, discuss the concept of irrational and catastrophic thoughts uh, we'll also discuss you know how can we reduce irrational catastrophic thoughts as a way of dealing with stress and emotional disturbances so let's see uh, what are these concepts so when we talk about um, mental ways of coping uh, the idea is that uh, human beings are um, especially when we think about our own life our future about other people where right, there is a lot of subjective elements involved human beings are imperfect information processor in the sense we generally don't process information very objectively very factually and as a result of that many time we develop distortions or dysfunctional thinking patterns in our life we generally pick them from our environment or because of some conditioning uh, generally uh, most of us uh, develop you know uh, dysfunctional or you know distortion in our thinking processes so whenever we think about various issues of our life about futures about um, other subjective elements uh, we don't think very you know factually or very objectively we don't interpret situations very objectively you know there is a lot of dysfunctional and distortions in our thinking processes and uh, so the, a large percentage of our thoughts are not actually factual so we'll see how these are true or in lot of by giving many examples and lot of the a lot of our thought processes are irrational and colored by our biases negativities insecurities and so on so most of our thoughts are not factual in the sense that you know they are colored by our insecurities our biases our belief systems which we pick from our environment from our societies from the people around us and these are kind of projected in whatever we think in our life so that is why that is the meaning of you know a lot of thoughts are irrational and you know uh, distorted so therefore um, many times symptoms of stress anxiety and depression lot of the psychological and you know, emotional disturbances that we experience in our life Uh, are may be largely caused by such you know distorted or dysfunctional thought processes okay. so therefore in, in order to deal with stressful circumstances or various emotional and psychological disturbances it is important to address our thinking process you know it, it is important to look at our thought processes and how we process information because root cause can be there uh it is important obviously there are physical ways that we have discussed They, these are also very important ways of dealing with but it is also important to look at our thought processes because we generate you know emotions and you know uh, stress and anxieties in our mind only so thought processes are basically they play a very important role so uh, when we talk about uh, dealing with thought processes you know the uh, uh, basically the idea is our thoughts and emotions are very strongly connected so if you see you know i'll just draw it here
emotions or we can say feelings they are continuously interacting with each other and you know in fact even the third element or behavior or actions are also kind of connected with with each other it is also connected it is also connected so the, the so these are all interconnected elements of our experience so the way we think it will influence our emotions or our emotions when it is triggered by something will influence our thoughts and thoughts and emotion also influences the actions that we do so actions don't happen out of blue they are always influenced by our thoughts and emotions so they are all interconnected to each other and that is why you know uh, we need to address many time uh, the causal factors could be our thought processes so we need to look at there uh, which causes lot of emotional disturbances uh, including our stressful experiences so let us understand this whole uh, mechanisms or process of thoughts and emotions and their interconnections using one important model or theory proposed by you know albert ellis uh, which is called as you know abc theory and this is a very popular theory which is also the ideas are used in various psychotherapies especially the cognitive therapies uh, which addresses our thought processes and tries to solve psychological issues and emotional issues by addressing our thought processes so abc theory is very popular uh, in various psychotherapies and they use these ideas uh, in treating people with many psychological issues so let us see what is this abc model is all about so albert ellis uh, in 19 around uh, 1957 he developed uh, emo uh, rational emotive behavior therapy which is in short also called as rabt uh, the basic idea of this therapy is uh, you know focus on changing our thinking or beliefs or belief patterns or thought processes to reduce maladaptive emotions and behavior so to change our emotions and behavior uh, this particular approach developed by this they try to change our thinking processes so so according to them it is the thinking processes that influences our emotions and thought process and our actions so by changing our thinking processes we can change our emotions we can change our behaviors or actions so according to ellis uh, we feel the way we think so basically means uh, our thinking and feeling are kind of corresponding to each other so if we experience you know uh, positive thinking uh, it will lead to positive emotions if we have negative emotions it will lead to negative uh, you know if 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 you think negatively it will lead to negative emotions and vice versa negative emotions may stimulate negative thoughts positive emotions may stimulate positive thoughts so thoughts and actions are kind of corresponding to each other and uh, each may influence you know other so whatever the kind of emotions we have we will have similar kind of thought processes in the sense of positive and negative so therefore feelings can be changed by changing our thought processes so the idea is you cannot directly change your emotions it is generally very difficult so one better approach to change our emotions particularly negative emotions and disturbing emotions uh, by changing our thought processes uh, because it is much easier to change our thought processes than our emotions so intervention can be done at the thought level so that is the idea so according to ellis uh, the problematic emotional reactions are caused by negative self talk or negative thought processes uh, which ellis called them uh, irrational or catastrophic thinking so he said mostly uh, the negative emotions are actually stimulated or caused by irrational or catastrophic thinking so we'll try to understand what is irrational uh, catastrophic thinking uh, so or thinking is responsible for this he uh, tried to explain uh, this whole uh, phenomena of how thoughts influences emotions by using 
ABC sequence. So what is ABC sequence? Let us try to understand. So ABC model basically, you know, is uh, talks about so A is basically, you know, activating events. So a, any event that happens in your life is an activating event that activates certain emotional reactions. B are basically beliefs. Uh, which are mostly unconscious and automatic. C is consequences. Now, so according to Elise, uh, this is the sequence by which we can explain how emotional reaction happens to an event. So let's say some event happens, which is A, activating event, and you experience some negative emotions, whatever consequences, you no know, depression, stress, anxiety, whatever it is. And there is something in between the event and the consequence, which is called as B element, which is called as beliefs. Uh, so uh, the sequence actually goes like this. A stimulates B or beliefs even stimulate certain belief system in us or certain thought processes um, largely which are you know automatic and b ultimately causes c c or consequences emotional consequences whatever no you, you so some event happens some negative thing happens in your life and you know you feel distress you know you feel an anxious you feel stressed whatever it is so generally people believe that it is the event that causes c this is a general belief that we see you know so i said i am depressed or i am anxious because you know i failed in an event or i could not perform an event so we associate a a with c so we generally think apparently that it is the A that is causing all the emotional consequences such as uh, anxiety, depression, etc. Illy says this is not right. A actually never causes C. This is not the right pathway. Rather, A causes B and the B ultimately causes C. So what is the meaning is that? Whenever some event happens in your life, let's say some negative event, you know, it will induce some beliefs in our in us, you know, some beliefs, the way you think about the event. That you say, you know, my life is doomed or I'm not, a, you know, what will happen to me, some kind of thought processes will kind of stimulated by this event. So how you think about the event and this thought processes or belief system will ultimately cause emotional consequences such as stress anxiety depression so it is not the event actually that causes consequences but the belief system that are activated by the event they are responsible for uh, the consequences but in general we think it is the event that is causing all the all the uh, emotional consequences which is not right so this is the model so let us give an example uh, to uh, understand this So let's say a an event happens in your life which is you know you failed in a task so this is the a activating event 
whatever even let's say you know you appeared for an interview and you failed in that you did not you could not perform well and uh, you did could not get selected there whatever it is you know it could be anything you failed in a task so that is the event and this event um, causes uh, let's say c this event is not so generally you know the consequence of this event could be let's say uh, you know it could be whatever you no know, depression stress anxiety etc and depending on your situation you may experience various kinds of emotions now eli says it is not this failure in a task that is causing depression or anxiety or stress failure itself is not causing what is happening when you failed in a task it stimulated certain beliefs beliefs uh, such as you know it could stimulate certain automatic unconscious beliefs such as you know i am a failure i am a worthless person etc etc you know there can be many such thought processes may be stimulated by failure in a task you know many time it may happen very automatically and unconsciously you may not be even aware of it you know so you fail in a task and automatically you feel no, i am a failure in life and you no know, kind of uh, you make it exaggerate it and think very negatively and you may feel i am a worthless person or i may ne never be able to get success in life so many thought processes can come up in your mind mostly very automatic and unconscious you know depending on your conditioning and learning experiences in your past so this these thought processes are actually causing stress and depression not the failure in an event so this is actually causing the c c part or consequences of the event so because you know you know there may be many other individuals who might have failed in the same task and they might not be influenced by it simply because they are thinking about it in a very different ways so it is how you think about the event they are causing uh, uh, the emotional consequences not the event itself so event never actually causes anything it is how in between the event and consequences your beliefs and thoughts so this is the meaning of abc sequence or abc model to understand how our thought processes influences emotions now elis says uh, primarily all the negative emotions and uh, you know uh, emotions and various psychological disturbances are uh, you know caused by irrational and catastrophic thoughts so he kind of co collectively called them as irrational or catastrophic thought processes so generally you know uh, the you know this because of this irrational thought processes uh, all this negative emotional and psychological disturbances and you know disorder actually happens at least one of the main reason for them so let us see what are these irrational catastrophic thinking you know, which happens at the b part in the abc model and which causes negative emotions so according to elis uh, albert oh, sorry uh, an irrational idea or belief has certain characteristics some of these characteristics are you know irrational uh, beliefs or ideas that distort reality okay. for example you know in our, our earlier example where we said you no know, somebody failed in a task and he is thinking that i am a failure in life so this is a distortion of reality why it is distortion because this is not the truth uh, failing in one task cannot make you a failure as such in you know in totality of your life so this is this person is distorting the reality it is objectively if you see it is a failing in one particular task but if that person is thinking that it is a failure of my life as such then it is distortion this distorting the situation or the uh, perception is distorted it is illogical simply be simply because you know failing in one task cannot lead to failure in whole life as such so it is illogical thought uh irrational thoughts also prevents you from reaching your goal so generally when you exaggerate uh, negative aspects of a 
situation and other thing you will not try to act proactively in the future so it will kind of prevents you from reaching your goals so you will not do things that are required to reach your goals simply because you are you no know, too pessimistically thinking about it and it will you no know, decrease your motivation level and it leads to unhealthy emotions we have already seen emotions are directly related to our thought processes so the moment you say i am a failure in life i mean it is bound, bound to you know cause lot of emotional disturbances you know you you are bound to experience you know uh, depression and sadness in your life and it leads to self defeating behavior so behaviors that will you know actually you know create obstacles in reaching your goals we have already discussed that because you know you once your motivation is decreased and once you see things pessimistically uh, you will not do the right things to reach your goals so you will kind of avoid things avoidance strategies will be used and uh, they will be kind of self defeating behaviors so these are some of the important characteristics of uh, irrational or catastrophic thinking so albert ellis uh, was a uh, was a you know therapist and he has long experience of you know from his uh, uh, experiences with the patients with the psychological issues and disturbances you know he found obviously there are many uh, such irrational thought processes are you know prevalent among human beings but some thought processes are very common uh, and uh, Um, uh, and they are based on demands about ourselves about others about the environment so based on what do, what we expect from our uh, ours from our own self from other people around us from the environment around us based on that you know he said this three uh, important irrational beliefs are there obviously there are many variations to that can happen there may be many other uh, irrational beliefs but he found these three are more common among people one is you know i must be outstandingly competent or i am worthless this is one common irrational belief you know prevalent among human beings you know so you always want to be com- outstandingly competent or otherwise you will experience you know if experience that i am worthless person second is others must treat me considerably or they are absolutely rotten so you have lot of expectation from other people around you that they should always you know treat you with considerable approval and love etc third the world should always give me happiness so it's a kind of implicit belief that i should always get happiness from the world huh? so if i generally ask whether no people you know people in general you know uh, whether you subscribe to this kind of thought processes many may consciously think they don't you know uh, subscribe to this kind of thought processes but if you see human behavior uh, it it reflects you know they are they are kind of you know dwells on this kind of thought processes for example you know if just somebody you know indicate some slight rejection somebody whom they care and love if they reject you in some ways you know you will many people experience devastating emotion negative emotions you know why that person you know, rejects me so indirectly what is happening you believe that you know people around you should always accept you approve you with love and affection you, know? you may not if i ask you consciously you may not say i believe in that but from your behavior it is evident that you you know you believe that so this may be very unconsciously rooted in our mind uh so little bit of failure and rejection and you know suffering you know disturb people so much simply because they have this kind of you know deeper belief systems which many people may consciously may not be aware of them so these are you know uh, there may be many uh, such irrational beliefs but if you see uh, this irrational beliefs one thing is their very absolute statement you know you always want that something must happen in your life or something never should happen something should always happen so this kind of absolute statements are characteristics of these irrational beliefs and thought processes so can you for example you know think why are these very irrational thoughts why these thoughts are called as irrational thoughts now let's say you know the second thought 
uh, which is very common among people people that others must treat me always always must treat me must is a kind of absolute statement must treat me always treat me considerably with approval and love so why do you think this is an irrational thought what could be the reason behind it so if you think little bit logically you know you can find such thoughts are irrational simply because you know it is impossible to be liked by all people around you it is simply not possible you know and nobody is liked by everybody there will always be some people who may not like you uh, there will be some people who will like you simply because people have different taste and liking uh, so some may like your qualities some may not like you know, your qualities even though you may be very popular and very good in terms of nature some people simply don't like good people so what can you do about it so i mean it is simply impossible you know the people whom we worship maybe after death the great people while they were alive there were so many oppositions and the criticisms and you no know, disliking from the society they experienced so it is simply not in the nature that you know everybody will like you or always approve you it is simply not possible so that is why it is irrational thinking to expect that everybody around you kind of uh, will you know always approve you and, and always you know affectionately behave with you and also uh, the problem is you know if you always try to impress other you know, it is there is nothing wrong in becoming popular and impressing other people but if you try too hard all the time to impress other people one thing is that you will not have time and energy to do things that you like you will be always trying to running behind other people and you know, impressing them uh, which may not be good in long term you know and uh, people also get tired of if you try too much to impress them you know uh, so in that sense you know such thought processes are you know illogical and irrational so we have so many such irrational thoughts which are actually causing lot of emotional disturbances when we lot of these sufferings are actually self created you no know? we have discussed in the characteristics of stress that lot of stressful and you know negative emotional experiences are actually self created when we say that we were trying to say that by this kind of thought processes many time objectively there is a reason for you know being you know disturbed by something but many time it is exaggerated by such thoughts so this catastrophic thinking are based on irrational assumptions as we have tried to see how they are irrational and these are mostly automatic habitual and unconscious mostly sometimes it can be conscious also so something happens and it automatically gets activated in your mind because of your past condition these are very automatic unconscious thoughts so that is why you may not be aware of them that you know they are working in your mind so these beliefs take the shape of absolute statement mostly and has many thinking errors such as you know they ignore the positive aspects of things so if some one negative thing happened and you simply you know uh, exaggerating it so much that you are not seeing that there are many positive aspects to your life also so let's say now last example you fail in one task and you are saying my life is a failure so you are exaggerating the negative part too much and you are ignoring that so many positive things has also happened in your life so you are ignoring the positive exaggerating the negative and over generalizing them so you failed in one particular domain or aspect of life or area of life and you are kind of attributing it to every other aspect of your life so that is the meaning of over generalization so you are generalizing it to other aspects of your life where it is not connected uh, so these are uh, other qualities of irrational thoughts or characteristics of irrational thoughts so the important question is obviously you know now we understood uh, that such irrational thoughts are causing lot of emotional disturbances in us in many situations where you know uh, our sufferings could be you know self created by such thoughts where we should not suffer so much objectively but we are exaggerating them and you know suffering you know how oh, sufferings are kind of blown out of proportion 
So it is important to understand how can we reduce such thought processes, such irrational thought processes, so that you know <coughs> our uh, negative emotional experiences can be minimized. So because such thoughts will be there, you cannot completely erad eradicate them, but at least we can reduce them. So that is the idea. So uh, the major aim of rational emotive behavior therapy of ILIS, uh, the whole therapeutic approach, the whole idea is to reduce such irrational thoughts. So in a therapy, primarily and a professional helps you to detect them and kind of, you know, come out of them. So reduce the irrational thinking using our uh, logical and rational faculties. So when you know that something is irrational, to remove something which is irrational, the only thing that we can do is to use rational faculties, you know, use our logical faculties. Then only we can see something as irrational. So using our rational faculties, logical faculties to reduce ir irrational thinking is the purpose of a lot of, you know, therapies, particularly, you know, rational emotive behavior therapies and other cognitive therapies. So in this way, uh, uh, we'll be able to change our emotional experiences in the positive directions. Uh, so th this is how emotions are changed by changing our thinking processes. So generally, there are two steps involved in it uh, in terms of reducing catastrophic or irrational thoughts. You know. uh, so these steps, professionals can help you also in that way. And sometimes we can also use these steps in, on our own also to deal with our irrational thoughts. So first step is, you know, detecting irrational thoughts. So before we can do anything about something, you know, we need to detect it. We need to understand that it is there. So detection is very important, you know. Half of our task is actually the detection part. Many people are not able to detect it. They are not kind of, you know, they are not even aware that such thoughts are there. So detection is very important. Right? If you become aware that such thoughts are there and such thoughts are causing problems, uh, then uh, most of our problem will be automatically solved because you know that there, these are the issues. So detection is very important. So detection is the first part of it. And the second part is disputing them. Once you know that such thoughts are there the next important thing is to dispute them by using our rational faculties and logical faculties so uh, let us see in a more detailed way how can this be done so detecting irrational thought is very important as i said you know so first thing is we need to try to find out a thought you know? uh, how do we detect any thoughts how do you know that certain thoughts are there in your mind? How can we detect our thought processes? So if you uh, observe your mind, uh, our thoughts are primarily manifested in you know, either in the form of self-talk that you talk to yourself in terms of language. So it expresses in terms of talking, in terms of, you know, most of the time we, we are talking to ourselves. If you observe yourself, even though when you are, people are not around you, Continuously, we are talking to ourselves. So, these talking are basically thought processes that are going on in your mind. So, that is why, you know, language, are, language is so important in mental development, you know. Without language, we cannot really have any sophisticated thought processes. So, it is the language that is an important tool for, you know, you know expressing complex thought processes. So, that is why human beings have evolved language system. So, they have evolved thought processes. So this is very important. So detection of any thought is primarily looking at how you talk to yourself. So this is one important way. Another is obviously in terms of images and imageries we think. But mostly we thought, our thought processes are expressed in terms of self-talk, the talking that we do in terms of language. Uh, so you observe how, how, how do you, how are you basically talking to yourself? What are the content of that talk? This is the way to detect a thought. So for detecting an irrational thought, it is important you ask yourself, why are you getting upset? So in a, let's say something happened and you are getting upset. So ask yourself, why you are, are you getting upset? 
so from emotion you are tracing back to the thoughts that is causing that emotion by asking this question you trace back the thoughts which are causing that emotion so let's say you are you know feeling depressed or feeling sad or feeling you know, stressed about something then when you ask why i am getting stressed about it why i am getting you know sad about it so you will see what is the thought that is causing it so we'll give more examples so that you can understand it so ask yourself why you are getting upset so by that question you can trace the thoughts that are causing this uh, emotional disturbances it's very then it, it will become much easier then examine your self talk closely to find out irrational thoughts and expectations so i say no how you are talking what is the content of your self talk that you are talking to yourself you can detect irrational thoughts from there try to spot unrealistic pessimism and exaggeration in your thinking from your self talk you can identify am i really exaggerating it too much is there any evidence to it or it is just my own you know mental makeup or kind of you know i am creating them on my own am i exaggerating it i'm too much exaggerating this or are there any objective truth in it see if you are using keywords such as you know never must always these are important indicators of irrational thoughts that irrational thoughts are mostly absolute statements it must happen it should always happen so so those kind of absolute statements are kind of key characteristics of uh, irrational thoughts so you can look in look this try to find out these absolute uh, statements are you really you know thinking in terms of absolute statements are you exaggerating uh, too much so from your emotions try to trace back see your self talk observe them and try to detect you know what are the thought processes that are going on so many time detecting such thought uh, may become difficult especially you know when we are highly caught up by emotions that is why you know many time our support system works very well you know other people can detect it very easily you can talk in certain ways and other people will immediately say no no this is not the right way of looking at things why are you thinking like that so our people around us will kind of also helps us to detect so social support is so important that is why you know and if you are going to a professional obviously a professional can help you to detect that also but if you are motivated enough you can detect it on your own also so this is uh, some of the things that you can do to detect and uh, irrational thoughts the next part is disputing irrational beliefs or thoughts so this is so once you now detected that something is irrational in me how do you dispute or kind of you know reject them and replace them with more healthy thoughts so uh, albert ellis said you know uh, for disputing irrational beliefs uh, we should employ our reasoning process to remove the irrationality so albert ellis uh, and propose uh, you know f- f- at least f- these five important questions that you can ask to dispute or to kind of you know you know uh, reject or dispute such Uh, or debate this uh, you know, irrational beliefs one question is what is the self defeating irrational beliefs that i want to dispute so that is basically detecting first you need to detect what is that thought that is causing disturbing me from your emotions you can detect trace it back second question you should to ask what evi- evidence exists of the falseness of those beliefs are there any evidence to this belief that i am kind of continuously thinking about it or is it kind of my own mental creation what are the, f- the evidences for false falseness you can try to see or another way of looking at it is the third question does any evidence exist for the truth of this belief is kind of looking at the same thing from two different angles is it true or is it false you know, both ways you look at it what is the worst thing that can happen if i give up this belief so i am so disturbed by it what will happen if i just simply don't you know reject this belief you know since it is disturbing so much what is the worst thing that will happen ask yourself you can also ask what is the best thing that can happen if i give up this belief so these are some of the important questions that you can ask to kind of dispute your irrational beliefs 
So let us see uh, an example to understand this uh, process. So I took an example from you know albertelis.org and a website. So they gave an example from there. You know we can understand. So the first question that Albert Ellis proposed is you know uh, what is the self-defeating irrational beliefs that I want to dispute. So let's say here we take an example that this person is disturbed by you know maybe probably a rejection from someone that person you know uh, care for or love some person and he experienced some rejection and he is disturbed by it so this person you know when trace back the thoughts he find that he is disturbed because he has this belief that i must receive love from someone whom i really care because i very really care about this person love this person but uh, this person is not kind of returning back so and you have this belief i must get approval and affection from that person so this is the irrational thought that person is having so you detected that the next question you can ask what evidence does exist of the falseness of this belief so you kind of now disputing the thought process once you detected that so some of the you know evidences can be like that that no law of the universe exists that says that someone i care must love me you know so you don't have control over others behavior you know you might love somebody or you may love somebody you may care about somebody but you don't know how that person will behave you know it is not necessary that person who is always will return back with the same kind of affection and love you know? because you don't have control over that person so simply you know this beliefs may not hold that you must get in return the same reciprocal you know behavior so it is simply may not be uh, you know true if i do not receive love from one person i can still get it from others and find happiness that way so i mean getting just disturbed by it may not be uh, the right approach in the sense because you know it is just one person and you still has many other people around you and in your life from whom you may get lot of love and affection if no one i care for ever cares for me which is very unlikely i still can find enjoyment in friendship in works and books and in other things if someone i deeply care for rejects me that will be the most unfortunate it is maybe you know you may not like about it there may be sadness around it but i will hardly die or it, it is not end of my life or something so if you logically and objectively think about it then this thought uh, may not be very rational so these are some of the evidences of its falseness in terms of it is not a very rational thought process so you can see some of these arguments in terms of disputing it the next question uh, does any evidence exist for the truth of this belief no not really considerable evidence exists that if i love someone dearly and never am loved in return that i will then find my myself disadvantaged in convenience frustrated and deprived not necessarily if you don't get in return what you are expecting it doesn't make you a life of disadvantaged life or no frustrated or deprived life so there is no evidence for it you know so simply you know uh, it is not very rational thing to look at i certainly would prefer therefore not to get rejected but no amount of inconvenience amounts to horror i can still stand frustration and loneliness so these are some of the statement that shows you know you know it is not a very true state thought process that they that you are dwelling on what is the worst thing that can happen if you give up this belief so maybe you may think i would get deprived of various possible pleasures and inconveniences so you had certain expectation about that person so if you if that relationship doesn't work there may be some inconveniences and issues in life that is okay uh, but you can always find you know uh, newer relationships in your life this is not the end of road so uh, this can be the worst thing that can happen only 
so the kind of emotions that you are generating may be very exaggerated which may not be true what is the best that can happen if you give up these beliefs if you give up this belief you know there may be some advantage to it also for example i could devote more time and energy to winning someone else love and probably find some other bet someone better for me i could devote myself to other enjoyable pursuits that i have little to do with loving or relating such as work and artistic endeavor i could find it challenging and enjoyable to teach myself to live happily without love so there can be so many other ways of looking at the same thing which you are thinking as a kind of problems and disadvantage but there may be so many other aspects which may be positive also so by this you can kind of you know dispute an irrational thought and find out why it is false why it is not true and it may not be that bad actually um, ultimately if you spend some time when your emotions kind of you know you know decreases and intensity goes down you may many time find something which you are thinking very disadvantage in your life actually turning out to be uh, something of advantage or something of you know opening newer opportunities in your life so you don't know so all these things can happen so i mean uh, these are some of the ways some of the questions that you can use to dispute an irrational thought so you can do this kind of simple exercises in your life whenever you get disturbed you can find out trace out whether am i getting disturbed simply because of some irrational thought obviously you may get disturbed because of really an objective situation or real situation that is okay i mean there is no problem here we are talking about disturbances that are caused by irrational thoughts or illogical thoughts which are exaggerated self created so we can minimize them you know we are not saying ki all disturbances are not you know we should not have any disturbances in life no there are many objective situations which disturbs us and that are really valid but many of them are is a kind of exaggerated by rational thoughts so we need to intervene in, in those stages so we can use a simple chart to kind of do this exercise so so we can take uh, just earlier example to make it more simple so uh, you can do similar exercises you know activating event could be failure in a task consequences could be you know uh, you know sadness anxiety stress you can trace out your beliefs belief as i said i am a failure then you can kind of dispute them by detective once you have detected them you can dispute them uh, by you know uh, asking questions such as you know
how do I become a total failure if I do not succeed in one task? So similarly, you can use many other questions that I, I we have discussed. Uh, you can use all these questions uh, to kind of dispute your irrational thought. So you can use simple charts like that, you know, to do this exercise. And uh, uh, and it is also uh, generally, you know, many times we are not able to come out on your own uh, when you are really emotionally engrossed in something. It is always better to take help from people around us, our near and dear people or friends or family members and many times it may require professional intervention also where they can also help out so these are the important things so you can do these simple exercises in your life most of the time it can be done on your own also but obviously in extreme cases we need support from other people also so final thought is basically it is reported that it may take time and practice in changing our belief so it is not so easy uh, it may take time and practice uh, we need to continually work on recognizing our irrational beliefs and you know and disputing them and transforming our negative emotions into positive emotions so it may take some time uh, uh, so understanding this whole process is very important because many times we dwell on simple irrational thoughts and it they really disturbs us so much so simple thoughts you know ab which are irrational absolute thoughts you know and uh, they are very important that you replace them with more healthy thoughts uh, for example you know just somebody rejects one person and you simply start believing that everybody hates me and it is actually rejection from one person and that person start talking about no nobody likes me everybody hates me and he's that person is not looking at there are so many other people who kind of you know shows love towards that person so this is uh, you know we deal, dwell on such uh, you know small small thoughts uh, which really you know causes a lot of disturbances so it is very important that we need to do more self reflection and self observation uh, we need to be vigilant about our, uh, about our thought processes and this is an important and unique human quality that we can observe ourselves this is one of the gift of human beings that we can observe ourselves we can look at our own selves and judge what is wrong and what is right you know and we need to use this quality and faculty and this you know gift that is given to us do more self reflection be vigilant to your thought processes observe how you are thinking and how it is affecting you and by changing our thoughts uh, because a lot of thoughts can be changed very easily and replacing them with more healthy thoughts we can kind of you know change our emotions and make our life more you know full of positive emotions and happiness uh, so these are some of the thoughts about uh, mental ways of coping uh, we can understand this use them in our life and benefit from it so with this i will uh, end today's lecture thank you mm -hmm.